What up, what up? Winbush here, and today I'm getting back into X Particles. I haven't done an X Particles um, tutorial in quite a while, so I figured why not? And what better way to do it is to show you guys the technique that I recently used for a movie trailer that's going to be debuting next week at Comic Con. Now, I can't show you the trailer yet, but I'm going to show you how I came up with the Fire Embers effect. I didn't want to use stock footage, I kind of wanted to use something a little bit more personalized that I could have tracking with the camera. And so, without further ado, let me just to show you how I did it. Okay, so I have Cinema 40 opened up right now. First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my size. Um, right now it's 720p. I'm just going to do 1080. Let's do it at 30 frames per second for now. Okay, and so to get started, I'm going to come up here to my geometry, come down and make a cylinder. Now my cylinder, let's put this on a positive X and let's just elongate this out. Um, let's see, 700 maybe. Then let's just make this a little bit smaller. Uh, maybe around 20. And this is basically where our particles are gonna be emitting from. So now I wanna come up and go to X particles and come down to XP system. And if you watched any of my tutorials in the past, you know I like using XP system because it organizes everything over here in um, under this tab here. And so I have an emitter already set up since I did that. And I'm just gonna name this one XP emitter one. And you'll see why in a little bit. But first we wanna set up this emitter to emit from the cylinder. And so over here in my attributes window, under object, I wanna click on emitter shape, go under object. And then that's gonna give us this little slot here that we can actually click and drag our object into. Now, if I click play in my timeline, you can see that we now have particles emitting from our cylinder here, but it's not emitting from everywhere there. And so instead of um, polygon center, we wanna do emit from polygon area. Now, when we click play, we're gonna see particles emitting from all over our cylinder here. And let me make my timeline like 600 frames. So that's not gonna keep resetting after three seconds. Okay, so now what we want to do is change our particle direction to go north, straight up. And so we go to our particle direction. Instead of normal, we're going to do Y plus axis. So now if I click play, now our particles are moving straight up. But they're moving kind of like in a linear fashion. But first, before I do anything else, let me change the look of this so it kind of looks a little bit more like fire embers. And this is just going to be for our display viewport while we're working. So if I go over to my attributes window, hit display, come down here to emitter display, and let's just turn these into lines. And then our particle color will do something a little bit more fiery, maybe like an orange. Now let's click play again. Now we have something that looks a little bit more like embers there. Okay, so now we kind of want to mess around with the attributes. Like if you watch it playing now, everything is just kind of linear, moving at the same pace. So let's change all that now. So I want to go under my emission tab here, under my attributes window. And under lifespan, actually no, not lifespan. Let's go to birth rate. Let's birth like 200 particles. And let's do a variation of 100. And then for my particle speed, Let's do like 200 with a variation of 75. And I'm just totally picking random numbers here, but you always wanna add a little bit of variance so that we everything's just not linear and the same. So let's click play and see what this is looking like. So now you can see some of the particles are moving faster than others. That's adding our variance that we want to add in there, which is looking good. And so I think for this emitter, yeah, I think that's gonna work for this emitter. So now we want to add a little bit of wind, which if I go under modifiers and go under motion modifier, we can find XP wind. We're going to click that on. Now let's just click play and kind of see how it's affecting it. And if we look at it in our viewport, look at it from like the right side, you can see that the particles are kind of veering away from the camera. So let's pull that back a little bit. And actually I could do this in real time as I'm playing. So let me make this larger. Okay, so let's move my wind speed down to like half, let's say 75. Let's add a little bit of turbulence in here too. 
So now you can see our embers are starting to sway back and forth a little bit. Actually, I'm making them one speed. Let's try 60. So it's looking, it's not looking bad there. Let's maybe add an actual turbulence. So if I go back to my modifiers, go under motion modifiers, come down under XP turbulence. Then let's add for noise type. Let's try a wavy turbulence and see what this looks like. So we're starting to get a little bit of waves in there. I could bring up my strength and really dial it in. And this is all going to depend on like what kind of shot you're working on, where you want your fire to be emitting from, like if it's a violent flame or you kind of just want embers in your scene. And so all this is depending on what you're really looking for. And if I look in my perspective viewport, we could kind of see that we have some nice looking embers in here. And so what the next step will be is to add a little bit more variance, which I'm just going to hold down control on my keyboard, click and drag my emitter. And let's name this one emitter two. And I'm just going to change out maybe my birth rate to like 100, do a variance of 75. Um, we could change our wind speed. Let's make this a little bit faster. Now let's see what this looks like. So now we have some straggling particles or embers in our scene here. We can actually click and drag again and just make another copy. So hold down control, click and drag your emitter. Now for this one, let's make our speed like a hundred. Actually, yeah, so we'll make this one 100. Um, let's make our birth rate 50. We'll cut it in half. And let's see what this looks like. So I'm just adding variants of different particle speeds. And, you know, some are going to last longer than others. But it's looking decent in there. Hopefully you guys can see that up on the screen since it's like orange over gray. Actually, let me change... The display color to something a little bit more easier to see so maybe let's do let's do blue see if that shows up on the screen better oops i changed the icon color i want to change my particle color so change this to blue there we go so hopefully that's a little bit more recognizable maybe a little bit lighter Yeah, so hopefully you guys can see that on your screen now. So you can see, it looks like the darker blue ones are kind of straggling in there. We have our main body of embers. Let me go back to my mission. I'll make my birth rate just half for my initial emitter. So what I'm doing here, I'm just kind of dialing everything in, but I won't bore you guys with that. I'll take you on to the next step, which is how to render this out using Redshift. Now, if you're using just a Cinema 4D render or even Cycles 4D, I think you can kind of just like drag your material onto your emitter and it should render. I think I'm not, it's been a while since I've used either, but I mainly use Redshift. So I'll show you guys how to use Redshift. And so what our first step is going to be is we go under generators and we're going to add an XP trail. And what we want to do here, actually, let me name this one XP Trail 1. And I want to drag my emitter one into this emitter slot here. Now, if I click play, you can see the emitter from emitter 1 is making these trails leaving behind it. And let me go up. I don't think I set my render to Redshift. Yeah, so under my render settings, I actually want to set this to Redshift. Now, if I bring open my render viewer and click play, we're going to see what well, we should see all these little strands and everything in here. Actually, no, we won't because I need to add my redshift tag. So if I go under tags and go under redshift tags and add a redshift object, you can see now, like usually if you, um, let me add it to cylinder so you guys can see. So if I go under cylinder and I add an object tag, we're not going to have this tab called curves. But if you add it to something like a spline, then you get this extra tab called curve. And this will allow you to render out your splines using Redshift. 
So under mode, you can actually have it render out as like a box shape, a cylinder, a capsule. But what I want to use is a hair strand. And um, I'll leave my thickness at one, but you could change your thickness here as well. I'm going to delete this on my cylinder. We don't need it. So now if I go to my render view, we should start seeing. Yeah, so now we have all of our strands in here. And it's just going to be gray because there's no material or anything on there. So our first step is going to be to go back to the XP trail. And let's go under, um, which one is it? So we want to go under, not birth rate. Oh, under here, full, the full scene trail. We want to click this off. And under trail length, we just want one. So now if we play it again, you can see the little white strands off our particle here. And that's going to be representative of our fire ember. So if I click play now, this is all you're going to see in the scene. And we can actually add a material to it. So if I come down here to my lower left hand corner under create, go to redshift and go to materials. Let me do that incandescent one because this one is a uh, emissive material. And so uh, the way I have my palette set up, I have my attributes window automatically here to the left of my objects tab. But if you don't have it set up like this, all you do is double click your material and it brings up your shader graph. So from here, I'm gonna click on my incandescent node and then I'm gonna just change out my color. So I'll make this first one red and I'm actually gonna make two more just so I have a little bit more variety. So I'm gonna click on this second one down here. Let me drag this window up. So I'm gonna click on the second one. And I'm gonna change this one orange. And then I'm gonna click on this third one. Make this one a little bit more yellowish. A little orangish yellowish. So I'm gonna start with my red one. Drag it onto my XP trail. And let me show you what it looks like in the render view. See, now we have a material on our spline here that's created from our emitter. So I'm going to just hold down control, drag this down again to make a copy, name this XP Trail 2. And then under my emitter, I'm going to bring over my XP Emitter 2. Then I'm going to give this one the orange material. Then copy the same thing that I just did, make another copy, name this one 3. Bring in Emitter 3. And let's bring in the yellow material. So now let me click play. And then come over to my render view. Click play here. And now we can see we have all three emitters being represented in our scene here. And if I scroll back a little bit, say like 50%, we can see everything in our window here. Nope. Original scale. Down to 50. There we go. So now we can see all of our particles in our window. And so the next step will be up to you guys if you want to bring a camera in here, kind of have the camera move slow motion through your embers or however you have your scene set up. You can render it out like if you want, but I'm going to render this out and then I'm going to composite it in After Effects. And so I just came up to my render settings. I'm going to come down to format, PNG. I'm just going to make it a 16 bit PNG. And make sure you hit the alpha channel on so we render out our alpha with it. And then scroll down to composite project settings. And I'm using After Effects. And I usually just check mark everything here. And what this does is as your project is rendering, when it's done, it's going to make an AEC file, which you could bring into After Effects. And that's going to bring in, like if you did an AOV and you have like an emission emitter, or not an emission emitter, but if you have an emission tag under your AOV or if you have like a depth tag or anything like that, it brings all of that in into a composition already pre-made in the After Effects. You just have to import one file. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to render it out basically like this. And so I'm going to let the scene render out and then I'll meet you guys on the flip side in After Effects. All right. So now everything's rendered out. I'm in After Effects. And like I said, this is the AEC file that renders out whenever you did the compositing window in Cinema 4D. So I'm just gonna import this file here, the Fire Embers AEC. Click import. And now you see that it made a comp window and it brought in my image sequence. 
So I'm just going to double click on my comp window here. Let this play through a little bit. You can see we have our fire embers here. And I actually went through and I, um, I changed the settings a little bit before I hit render. I made it 60 frames per second. And I did it at ultra widescreen at 3044 or 3440 by 1440. Just because I use a widescreen monitor and just thought it'd be fun to do that. And so um, this is the results that I got. And so you can see it kind of looks like fire embers. It moves like fire embers, but we're not getting any type of glow effects and just having like one particle red, one orange, and you know, like a darker yellow looks kind of weird. So let's get this set up to look a little bit more embery, if that's a word. Um, okay, so we're gonna come under effects and presets. Let's start by adding, let's do Colorama. One of my favorite plugins that comes in after effects. So I bring that over and if I come under my output cycle, we could just use a preset here. So we have one for fire, then we have one for fire and smoke. Let's just try fire. So this gives us, it gives us a different color palette if I click on and off. So this, you know, adds a little bit of glow to it, looks a little bit more embery, but let's add a ramp to it. And we're going to integrate a ramp here so that towards the bottom or it's closer to the fire, it's going to be a little bit more hot. And then as it moves up and it cools off, it's going to be a little bit more cooler. And so for my end color, let's make this maybe like a reddish. Yeah, not reddish, but actual red. And then for our start color, let's make this more on a orange spectrum, like so. And then I'm going to blend with original just a little bit to give a little bit of variation. So we could do like 50%. So it's looking a little bit better. Actually, let me get on to like 30%. Like so. All right, cool. So now let's add a glow we could just use the glow that comes in after effects it's under stylized so i mean you could use any glow that you have if you have a third party glow but we'll keep it all within after effects so we'll just use this glow here and it's already doing a pretty decent job if i click it off let me zoom in a little bit to like 100 percent okay so if i click it off and click it on you can kind of see is radiating around our particle here a little bit so we can up the intensity if we want. Let's try four. We could play with the radius a little bit like so. And then our final step is going to be to add a fast blur. So if I go back to my effects and presets, type in fast and let me go with fast box blur and zoom back in here. And then I'm going to hit repeat edges because once we add a blur and if we don't click on that, it's going to look funky around the edges. So you make sure you hit repeat edges and I want to do our blur just to our vertical. And now let's bring our blur up slowly. So let's see what one looks like. Maybe let's see what two looks like. Yeah, so two doesn't look too bad. So let's see what happens if I do a playback. I might take a few moments here. I have it at full resolution. Actually, let me knock it down to half. There we go. Playback's coming in a little bit faster. As you can see, there's our, our particles and they're swaying with the motion to follow along. So it's looking pretty decent. So, you know, over top of some footage, maybe with some fire, you know, you can add some... Um, heat distortion in there. Like I said, depending on the shot, what you're going for, this is a quick and easy way to add custom fire embers so you can have it actually track with your camera if you have a camera in there or whatever you're trying to do. So let's click play, see what this looks like. So there we go. Yeah, we have a fire ember scene and that's how you render out fire embers from Redshift using X particles. If you guys want these scene files, you could go to my Gumroad page. I'll make sure to leave it in a comment below. Just click on it and I'll make it absolutely free for you guys. And the same goes for any projects I put on YouTube. I try not to sell them. Everything that you see on my Gumroad is free. So please feel free, download the project files and you can even use it in your project if you want or use it for references. So till next time, keep creating. I'll see you next time.